Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and in this one, talking about 10 things you should do in preparation for the balancing update that's coming out, because oftentimes people fall into um, a situation where they're not being proactive, and you want to already be preparing for the update before it comes out, because we already know a lot of what's going to be in it. Um, so mainly talking about the balancing change here, everyone knows the big one that's coming, uh, more level 12 wall pieces for Town Hall 11, now, that's a joke. Uh, the Inferno Tower change, of course, is going to be the big thing that's coming. So a lot of these are based off that, but there is stuff for both Town Hall 9s, 10s, and 11s in this video, so be sure to watch it regardless of your exact Town Hall level because there's um, little uh, things you should be preparing for in this video for all Town Hall levels. So. Let's get started right away with one that is probably one of the more obvious ones, but that is um, as a direct result of the Inferno Tower no longer blocking heal, make sure you have max hogs and miners at Town Hall 10 and 11, because uh, those are going to be your main troops for three stars, and you want to make sure that you have those not only maxed out, but also you practice with them in friendly challenge, even if it doesn't look like it's working out that well. Um, know it's going to be a lot more successful. You don't have to bring a freeze. You can just heal over the infernos, um, assuming there's nothing else in the update that's going to uh, change the situation that we don't know about yet. So uh, get those hogs and miners upgraded and be comfortable with them. Uh, by the way, if you hear my dog snoring in the background, I apologize. Not much I can do about it. Um, anyway, though, moving on to the second one, reevaluate where your giant bombs are and where your uh, bomb towers are on your bases. So as we start to get close to designing new bases um, at Town Hall 9, 10, and 11, but especially 10 and 11, keep in mind that the Infernos are no longer going to keep the, uh, the troops without a heal as they hit bombs. So you want to make sure you have very uh, key giant bomb locations. You can't kind of carelessly put them on the outside of your base anymore. You got to really make sure that um, your five giant bombs, then also your two bomb towers are strategically located um, because you can force um, the attacker to run out of heal spells before they get through all your giant bombs on, say, a hog attack. So that's one thing you can do is keep those single giant bombs and bomb towers spread out. Don't try to kill everything with one blow, but try to um, make it so they don't have a heal spell to cover certain areas where there is a giant bomb. So that's something to keep in mind um, as we approach the update here. Number three, start building bases at Town Hall 10 and even Town Hall 11 that have single targeted infernos. Now, this is going to be a big change, but let me give you guys some tips so you can get right out ahead of the game. Um, the, the key is going to be putting them in locations where they can't easily be queen charged. Because if you, even if you have a single inferno, the queen can still charge the inferno and take it out if it's not in a good location. So you want to really make sure that you put it in a place where there's walls around it that are just far enough that the queen can't shoot over. I'm talking... Uh, four tiles between the inferno tower and the wall that way it can cover beyond the wall uh, significantly but the queen up against the wall can't reach it um, so that's something to keep in mind don't make it too easy to charge those single infernos but um, i'd recommend starting uh, to kind of mess around with a few bases where you um, you put one single inferno on each side to basically prevent a queen charge deep into the base on either side because queen charges we can already speculate are going to be very very prevalent at town hall 10 for three star attacks so i would say start messing around in friendly challenges already see what works against the current stuff and if you can maybe get a base that can somewhat defend successfully of course it's not going to be as effective as the multi but if you can get a base that you know still works out okay against most standard attacks um, it should be able to adapt well to defend queen charges when they become more popular after the update. Because I think single infernos, there's, there's going to be um, a very good argument to use them, and they might become even more common than multis. I cannot speculate right now. I have not seen the update on a big scale in the game, but um, it's very reasonable that that might be the case. So we'll keep that in mind, but I'd say already start messing around with those bases that have the single infernos. 
um, one on each side, or maybe just one single Inferno to guard a very susceptible area to Queen charges. But just know that um, really what separates, um, without the Infernos being a factor blocking the heal, the things that can stop a Queen charge is well-placed point defense, um, skelly traps, heroes, those are good ways to mess up the Queen charge, and also uh, air defenses to shoot down those healers, make the wall breaker pathing tricky, make it tricky to keep those healers from getting shot down. Um, so make it difficult to get the queen inside the base and uh, try to target those healers with seeking air mines um, in likely areas or um, air defenses in good areas to take out those healers uh, before the queen can get too far into your base. All right, let's move on to number four, another defensive tip. This is stack your red air bombs and keep them away from infernos and high DPS areas. So basically what this means is for La Luna attacks, people are most likely going to be dropping a lot of heal spells because the, um, the heals are being buffed so much as a result of the freeze, um, or as a result of the inferno no longer blocking heal. Um, they're going to be buffed. The freeze is going to be probably mostly pointless. So people are going to be healing over Inferno Towers and Wizard Towers in just a lot of DPS areas. So th you don't want to put your red air bombs where they're going to be using the heals. It's almost like um, on a uh, to defend hogs, you don't put your spring traps right next to your giant bombs because that's kind of redundant. So I would recommend you put your red air bombs maybe in groups of two in locations where the loons are likely going to travel in somewhat large groups, but there's probably not going to be a heal spell. And that's something you kind of have to get the feel of by looking at your own base and seeing where that area most likely is. But don't put those red air bombs by your inferno. You can no longer kind of add on to that inferno damage because people will most likely have a heal if the area is big enough and has enough damage. So keep that in mind for base building. Okay, next one, number five, practice your queen charges and practice the wall breaker pathing. You can watch my last video just uploaded yesterday on wall breaker pathing, but really want to make sure that you're able to do a, a queen charge into a base at Town Hall 10 and that you're able uh, to kind of predict how the wall breakers are going to work because oftentimes you have to wall break through multiple layers of a base to do a successful queen charge. So start messing around in friendly challenges and uh, clan wars if you can to, to get down the wall breaker pathing and the fundamentals of the queen walk, the queen charge, because even if you don't already use that, even if you like using other strategies, that might be something that becomes so popular um, that it has to be used. So uh, definitely start practicing with that and get the hang of that. Um, moving on to the next one, number six. This one is for Town Hall 9s, uh, kind of what you should be practicing as we get close to the update. I would say two things. The first, I would maybe take another look at La Loon if you don't typically use it. The Lava Hounds are getting a slight buff and also the Expo are getting a reduced amount of damage. Um, the Expo reduction is helpful for pretty much any attack, but of course it also helps La Loon. But I think the Lava Hound buff, not a significant buff, I wouldn't say, just a few hundred hit points, but probably makes it a little bit more worth it to look into using La Loon attacks if you're kind of torn between whether to go air or ground. So La Loon is something that possibly reconsider if you don't typically use it. But I'd say even more uh, importantly, look into some level 8 giants. Um, and I'm not kidding. The level 8 giants are getting a pretty substantial buff from 1260 hit points to 1440 hit points. So I'm talking bringing those in your clan castle as a Town Hall 9 and doing an HGH attack um, like we kind of used to see even before bowlers where you have healers, giants and hogs and like two rages and two heals and just letting those giants kind of fight through the base take out defenses because uh golem only has about 6,000 hit points i think exactly 6,000 at level four whereas a giant at level eight will now have 1440 so pretty much about four giants is going to equal that golem not counting the golemites of course but the, the giants also can be splash healed they do much more damage a group of uh, six of them will do much more damage than a golem will um, so that's something to think about is practicing the hgh now you can't bring bowlers in the cc with this one because you already have giants um, and the town hall nine giants aren't getting a buff so i wouldn't really look at using those but if you are going to use those level eight giants um and going to consider using them after the update I'd say practice a little bit with them because they might be um, a new Town Hall 9 strategy that can kind of slip in there and work on a lot of bases. 
Okay, number seven, and this one a little bit different than the last two, talking about the clan games that are coming out. Um, I'm not able to really give you guys much information um, beyond just like the blog post that everyone has seen by now, but there are clan games. They involve different like challenge type things, and my recommendation is kind of get close with your clan. You know, find people that um, are able to be online at the same time you guys are, and just be, be ready because clan games are going to involve the participation of the clan on a large scale. I'm not sure how fun these are going to be. I haven't really tried them out much, but um, I'd recommend you guys get ready uh, to to be in another like uh, cooperative thing, kind of like a clan war, but uh, more of like a quest type thing, just a, a laid back feature in the game. So get close with your clan mates if you're not already, and that should be something interesting to watch for once the update comes out. We only have a little bit of information right now, um, but we'll see a lot more once the update drops. Okay, uh, number eight. This one is kind of a thing not to do almost. Uh, Town Hall 10s don't panic rush to Town Hall 11. I think Town Hall 10, um, there's still, there's, it's not like at a competitive war level, it's not going to be interesting anymore. I think it's still going to be more difficult than Town Hall 9 is right now. I'd say substantially so. So there's no point to uh, to panic upgrade to Town Hall 11. Now, after you see the update comes out, you can assess it for yourself. And if you still want to upgrade uh, to Town Hall 11, if you're a max Town Hall 10, uh, then go for it. But I recommend you kind of wait, assess the update, and um, just have some faith in Town Hall 10 and in the changes Super Sowers are making. Because uh, for a lot of players, this is going to make Town Hall 10 more fun because now they can finally three star. And uh, it's very, it's a very uh, small group of players that are already three starring more than just very occasionally at Town Hall 10. So for that group of people, I would say don't don't even rush to Town Hall 11 quite yet. Wait it out and see how Town Hall 10 is going to look after the update because it could still be pretty fun. And I'm hoping it is for sure. So we'll have to wait and see because um, I can't speculate much without having seen it on a large scale with all the players and the war clans taking a shot at 10v10 three stars and uh, assort assorted attacks like that. So moving on to number nine, this one is a defensive tip again, and it is, I'd, I'd say, a pretty, pretty good advice. You're going to want to protect your queen and even your king and your CC troops more because they are going to be very important in ruining attacks. So if you look at um, some overpowering attacks, oftentimes it is the CC troops and the heroes that are kind of that one factor that's difficult for the attacker to predict, and they have enough damage, they do enough damage, and they have enough firepower almost to mess up some hits. So when you're thinking about building a base now, the Inferno Towers are less important. I'd say more important is protecting your queen adequately because she can mess up Laloon attacks very easily in hog attacks as well. So if people are going to be doing Laloon or hog, if they miss your queen, they're in trouble. So put some skelly traps by your queen. Make sure you put some time into protecting her deep inside your base. And that should allow you to, uh, to be more successful. Now against miners, which might be um, a very popular strategy post-update, there's not a whole lot you can do, but um, I'd say we might see small CCs, baby dragons, uh, Valks, stuff like that, become more popular at Town Hall 10, because at Town Hall 10, it's mainly going to be defending other Town Hall 10s. The dips are going to be a given. Um, we're not going to see base builders trying to defend against Town Hall 11s anymore. It's going to be defend those 10v10 triples. Um, the dips are going to be maybe even easier than a Town Hall 10 dipping a Town Hall 9 but I'd say probably about as easy as, as that is right now, which is a very, very high percentage of three stars at that level with very occasional and somewhat hilarious slash sad fails on uh, for 10v9s. But, but that's how it's going to be for 11v10. So the bases, you're going to be defending other Town Hall 10s, and you want to make sure you protect those important um, factors such as the queen, the king, and the CC troops, because with the infernos being nerfed, those are becoming your most important uh, things to protect. The Infernos are going to play less of a role, which is going to shift more on, to, more on the shoulders of, of the heroes and the CC troops. 
Okay, last one. Don't mean to uh, to kind of troll you guys, but watch my channel because I'm going to be putting out a lot of content covering the update, telling you guys what strategies you need to know, what defensive changes you should make, all that kind of stuff. So the last one, number 10, is watch One Hive Gazette. A little bit self-serving, but it is my video, and I hope if that one didn't help, at least the first nine tips helped. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and the background attacks that went along with it. That'll do it. Um, we'll wait and see for the update. I think it's coming out in December. It's called the December 2017 update in the Supercell post. So I'd say it's safe to say it's before, um, probably before Christmas, but it could be after um, in the in the few days of December after Christmas. But uh, we'll wait and see. Um, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bisectatron out.